Hey everybody, I just wanted to make a very quick video and in this video we're going to talk real quick about the CPI report and we're going to talk about the Fed Funds futures and how that reacted as well as just looking at the VIX and looking at the SPY. So uh, let's just go ahead and look at the CPI report. So um, if I'm just reading the first few paragraphs, it says right here, the um, consumer price index for all urban consumers rose 0.5% in January on a seasonally adjusted basis. So this is basically saying, hey, month over month, we went up 0.5%, which is not very good, but it was within um, expectations, surprisingly. So um, if we're looking at the last 12 months, you know, this actually increased by 6.4%. So, you know, obviously that's not that great either. And, um, you know, the Fed probably has some work to do. Now, uh, let's go ahead and read this part right here. It says the index for shelter was by far the largest contributor to the monthly all items increase, accounting for nearly half of the monthly all items increase. With the indexes for food, gasoline, and natural gas also contributing, the food index increased 0.5% over the month with the food at home index rising 0.4%. The energy index increased 2% over the month as all major energy components indexes rose over the month. So, um, you know, in this channel, we talked about this. You know, we were basically looking at RBOP futures and um, we were looking at EIA data, which was all pointing to um, energy prices going up in uh, January versus December. So in December, you know, they were especially down, but, you know, come January, they definitely picked up. Now, um, you know, this kind of gives us a pretty grim outlook on uh, CPI and inflation in the short run. But um, let's kind of see how the Fed Funds futures reacted to that. So if you guys do remember, you know, um, I get these annoying little pop-ups because this is a free version. But now that that's out of the way, um, if you guys do remember, I did make a video a few days ago talking about these Fed Funds futures contracts. So uh, let me just go over it again real quick. Uh, ZQH 2023, that is going to represent the um, March Fed Funds Futures contracts. ZQZ 2023, that represents the December Fed Funds Futures contracts. So in this little formula right here, I am calculating the spread between these, which is currently at 0.46. Now, um, this morning before the CPI read, it was sitting at around 0.3. So it went up pretty um, substantially. So uh, what is this actually saying? It is saying that um, rates are essentially going to be about 0.5 uh, higher in uh, December versus March. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the CME watch. So right now, we are pretty much sitting at 4.5 to 4.75% on the Fed's funds futures. So in March, you know, we're expected another 25 basis point rate hike. So this is going to go to 4.75 to 5. So we're now expecting from uh, this spread in the contracts that we're going to go up by 0.5. So essentially what that means is we add 0.5 to both of these numbers. So, you know, we're expecting that by December, you know, we're going to be at a Fed's funds futures of, um, or not Fed funds futures, just Fed funds rate of 5.25 to 5.5. So, you know, basically today's CPI read bumped us up by 0.25, which is not really a good signal. So, you know, just the way that I see it, you know, I see a lot of bearishness, but the market is actually not down a whole lot, but we did see a lot of trickery. So uh, let's just go ahead and look at SPY. Now, if we're looking at SPY right here, you know, we do have this trend channel. We broke out of it. Now we're kind of in this flagging process, but it could just be distribution here. So if we're looking at this um, purple box right here, this was a former area of uh, distribution right here. So it was a former sell zone where we sold off right here. This was back in June. Uh, we sold off again here in August. Uh, we popped back up here again in September and we sold off. Um, right in December, we sold off. And, you know, we're right in that zone again. So if we start falling out of this zone, I do think that we get increasingly bearish. But we do have several layers of support. So we have this uh, resistance trend line that we broke out of, which is down sloping. So if we were to basically get here by the end of the week, you know, that would pretty much put us at about 395. Now, um, 
if we're going on the uh, one year time frame, we have the 50 day and the 200 day. The 50 day is pretty much sitting at um, 395.91. So it's pretty much literally aligned with that resistance trend line that um, is now going to act as a support trend line. Uh, right below that, you know, if we were to get some sort of fake out and um, we were to sell off a little bit further below that 50 day, we have the 200 day at uh, 393.46 that we could bounce off of. So there is a lot of support down below, but you always have to watch out when we have all of these uh, supports kind of aligning in this one area. Sometimes what you can get is a major gap down and uh, continued selling below that. So, um, you know, look for something like that. If we saw something like that, that would be very, very bearish. And, you know, maybe if we did see a gap like that and then we did fill it, you know, that could just go back right back into this um, resistance trend line. So that's something to be very, very cautious of. Now, you might think, hey, guy, that's, that's a long ways away. You know, we're basically 10 basis points away. And right now we have a bullish trend going on. But let me just show you what happened on the day. Oh, boy, that's crazy. Let me auto adjust that right there. There we go. So, yeah, let's let's just see what happened on the day. So, you know, basically on market open, we had this massive, massive rally. Everybody got faked out, rug pulled right here. Uh, you know, it looked like we we're going to rebound a little bit because we double bottomed right there. And then we picked up a little bit and then boom, another rug pull. And then let's just see where this goes right now. I mean, this obviously doesn't look all that great right now. Now, um, I do want to look at some other things. So if I go, uh, let's go to uh, year to date. So if I go year to date. Uh, let's go ahead and drop an anchored VWAP. So let's see, right here basically starts the uh, new year. So if I drop an anchored VWAP right here, basically it's saying that this anchor is sitting right around uh, 399.74 for SPY. So um, pretty much what's going on here is that, you know, um, it's pretty much saying, hey, right now everybody who bought you know, early in the year, you know, on average, they're up, they're up right now. So if we do cut underneath that, you know, things do get very, very bearish. But like I said, we do have a lot of support down below. So definitely do watch out for that. Um, this validation of this year to day VWAP will probably be the first sign that we're going to uh, touch this um, support trend line. Now going back to the VIX, you know, let's just look at the VIX. Uh, VIX is pretty interesting right here because as you can see, we bounced off right here. But, you know, we did have this massive run up and we faded. So uh, let's just go out, zoom out a little bit. And look what we have here. If we're looking at this uh, COVID run up, we have this massive gap that we formed. And this is essentially the range that we're trading at right now. So we're trading in between that gap range. And you can see that we rejected clearly off of um, the base of that gap right there. So do note, you know, if we do break out of this area, I do think that the VIX can run. But right now the VIX is very, very wonky. It's doing all sorts of stuff. It might actually just pop right back into this triangle for all we know. And this might just be a fake out. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great one.